Four. 16 minutes, zero fouls. Shaq is six for eight. Great start. All right, Doug, from Detroit's point of view, what are they talking about right now? Well, I think you have to be very pleased, Marv. They're up one point. You look at their backcourt. They've only shot six of 18, Chauncey Phillips and Rip Hamilton, and they've done a nice job defensively on Dwayne Wade, three of 13. So they have to feel good about being in the lead here at halftime. Well, let's take a look at tonight's Dodge game summary. They're shooting, well, just about the same. Miami at 46%, and Detroit at, at 45. Pistons uh, hitting from downtown, five of seven. Rasheed Wallace, three of three from beyond the arc. See points in the paint. Heat with 28-18 advantage, and uh, Miami, as you'd expect, the edge in the fast break point department. Let's check in with Craig Sager. Craig? Well, at halftime, instead of sitting and resting, Shaquille O'Neal stood. They put a heat pad on his right thigh, and he walked throughout the locker room for the entire halftime. Meanwhile, the message to Dwayne Wade, stop pressing. Tayshaun Prince is a great defender. You are quicker than he is. Pick up the pace. Speed is our advantage. David? Well, Craig, the Pistons happy with their defense. They think that uh, they're going to keep throwing things at Shaquille O'Neal. Keep an eye on Rip Hamilton in the second half. As you know, he has that calf injury. But the Pistons strength coach, Arnie Kander, told me Rip's actually been better in the second halves of games than in the first half, and he doesn't do anything to, uh, to help him out with that other than putting on some Tiger Bomb Plus, as Arnie called it. Marv? All right, thanks, guys. Plus what? Do we know? Yeah, these Arnie throw a little something in there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steve always has those probing questions. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. Shot clock down to five. We saw Ben Wallace hit a moment ago. He's four of six from the field. And a foul on O'Neal trying to clear the path. And he picks up his first. Well, you can see one of the things that uh, Detroit is doing with Udonis Haslam. He loves that little 15 to 16 foot face up jump shot. Rasheed Wallace is not giving him that. And Ben Wallace is doing a nice job in the post defensively, getting in position to try to force Shaquille O'Neal out of his comfort zone. So nice job there on one of the best plays that Miami likes to run during the course of the season. Prince posting on Wade. And Prince played well by Wade. Came up short. Prince with the rebound. And oh, Wallace is feeling it. And hits again. <laughs> As I said in the first half, you don't crowd him to let him shoot the ball. So what he's doing, he comes out in his first two. He's really worked on that part of his game, though. You see him out shooting with a big ball before the game. And you know, Larry Brown really has made a conscious effort to make him more involved with the offense. He's five of seven from the field. Nice play by Wallace, stripping O'Neal. And here comes Phillips. Ball was knocked away. It'll be Detroit putting it in play. We talked earlier about that huge game one for Ben Wallace against the Pacers 21 points 15 rebounds not bad for the NBA's defensive player of the year Detroit with 20 on the shot clock minute and a half gone by in this third quarter game one of the Eastern Conference final series take shot Prince for the beautiful move going right at Dwayne Wade. This is what Kenny Smith was talking about at halftime. They are making Wade defend and you can see the frustration in Wade's face three for 13 in the first half never got anything easy. Now they're going right back at him. So they're trying to put a lot of pressure on Wade. Pistons have their biggest lead of the night. Here's Damon Jones. Looked like he wanted to shoot, changed his mind, try to get it down low to O'Neal. Last touch by the Pistons. Miami with four on the 24. Now the Pistons are racing out at Damon Jones anytime he has even a, maybe even a little look at a three to try to put him on the floor, make him dribble that basketball, chase him off that three point line. Wade can't find anyone. Very close to the five second violation. Aslan had it slapped away and rejected by Ben Wallace. He's everywhere. I mean, he's knocked the ball loose from Shaq. He knocked it loose there that time from Haslam. He blocked the shot. He's hit two jump shots. That's, that's, that's the kind of impact he has on this team. And it's a shot clock violation. So the Pistons come out of the backcourt. Phillips and Hamilton at the guards. Rasheed Wallace, Ben Wallace, Tayshawn Prince up front. Rasheed Wallace, yes. Well, what a great rhythm Detroit came out of the halftime with. They are moving the basketball. Their defense has been superb, making the extra pass, all the things Larry Brown talks about. 
And really all because of the energy of Ben Wallace, as you said, Doug, they've come out like gangbusters here. Wallace with the fadeaway jumper, Detroit by nine. Far for Dwayne Wade, eight points on just three of 13 shooting. You see the defense of Tayshawn Prince has bothered him. He misses the bank and then the pull up off the back iron. And then this one is a little out of character. Tries to post up. Hamilton shoots that fadeaway jump hook. This is one he normally makes, but I think the frustration of the evening has set in. So he's even missing some easy ones. And it's been a long night, but he can get it going, Doug. Well, you heard Chauncey Billups talk to Greg Sager about the different looks they're going to throw at Dwayne Wade. We've seen Prince, we've seen Hamilton, Billups, Lindsey Hunter, three of 13 for the night. He's just going to have to settle down, relax, get a couple good shots to go. But they're working him on both ends of the floor as well, so he's not getting a chance to rest any time out on that floor. Dwayne coming in, averaging just under 29 a game at his previous eight postseason contests. Able to get inside. So 10 points now for Wing. And that ends a 10-0 run by the Pistons, a run that goes back to the final minute of the first half. Well, remember game three against Washington, he had the terrible first half, about five turnovers as Hamilton knocks down the jumper. And he came out and had a huge second half. And they asked him afterwards, and he said, you know what, I look at the game as two halves. I don't I don't let the first half carry over to the second. So we'll see if he holds true to that statement and he can come out and get into a rhythm here in the second half. Pistons up by nine as O'Neal makes his move. A defensive three-second violation called on the Pistons for the second time this evening. What has hurt Miami here at the start of the third quarter, three turnovers in their first four possessions, they had three turnovers their entire, during the entire first half. Doug, I mentioned to you earlier how good Detroit's defense is, and you said it's not that it's physical, it's that it's quick. And I think we've seen the speed at every position in this first three, four minutes of the quarter. You, you can see a, a decided speed advantage over Miami. Well, you talked about it before. I mean, the team that fouls the least in the NBA is Phoenix. The second is Detroit. That's not a team that knocks you around. That's a team that moves their feet, uses their quickness, uses their range and size. So this is this is an incredible defense. Here is Wade trying to find the range. So they're going to make him a jump shooter. They're not going to give him any layups. And they're going to make him think about that shot. Wade trying to steal it from Ben Wallace. Adding a, a runner. To the repertoire. Here's Damon Jones way off. And he thought he was fouled. So the Pistons get it back. Marv, on the combination tonight of Damon Jones and Dwayne Wade are 5 for 19. In the last game of the regular season, they were 3 of 21. So the Pistons have targeted these two guys as being key, make Shaq work a lot, and then target these two guys and try to take them out of the offense. Pushing foul on Haslam. So Rasheed Wallace will go to the line. Now he's struggled, as you can see, this season. He had the one big game, the triple-double, 31 points, 10 assists, 10 rebounds. But the other two, he really struggled, just 17 points, 46% shooting. And as you mentioned, Doug, Damon Jones has struggled against this Piston defense, too. I always felt, as a spot-up shooter, the toughest teams to play against were the ones who were long and quick because they could get out and just challenge that shot a little bit better than other teams could. And Jones, on the season, against this Piston defense, shot 4 of 30 from the floor. So he struggled all year long and just 1 of 4 here tonight. Pistons lead by 10. Four minutes gone by in the third quarter. It's game one of the Eastern Conference Final Series. Game two here in Miami on Wednesday night. Eddie Jones had the hot hand of the first half. His Haslam has been very quiet. Udonis Haslam with his first field goal. He's playing with that dislocated left middle finger. The injury sustained in practice yesterday. He's been placed in a split. It is the non-shooting hand, but uh, they have had an effect. He has been reluctant to take the shot. Ben Wallace kicking it out. 
Nice ball movement. Rasheed Wallace from downtown for the fourth time tonight. Well, they are moving that basketball. They've got you on a string. They're posting up Dwayne Wade. If you try to give help, finding the open man and making the extra pass and then knocking down that three, six of eight tonight. Rasheed Wallace has been terrific. Wade with a nice move on Prince. That time he had Prince reeling backward off stride for the first time tonight. And he just let that one go. He just shot it. The shot before he tried to guide in there, you could see he was frustrated. It's like maybe he's finally starting to relax a little bit, trying to get himself into the flow of the game. Prince backing Wade and stripped by Wade. Nice play by Dwayne Wade. Wade with the hesitation move. Back comes Phillips. Phillips and Hamilton in the backcourt. Prince, Rasheed Wallace, Ben Wallace up front. Here's Rasheed. Now that's the first three-point attempt that he has missed. Oh, that was halfway down, too. You could see he was feeling it, and he smiled to himself on the way back down, knowing he probably should have made that one. O'Neal. Kept alive by Haslam, and he's called for a traveling violation. You can see how much pressure the Detroit Pistons front line puts on you. Shaq that time wheeled in, got no lift on that shot. The shot was very flat, and Haslam, who was terrific in the regular season against the Pistons, he averaged almost 15 point shots, 64%. Tonight has been able to shake loose for only one field goal. So this Detroit defense, they've covered so much space on the floor. And Bernie Fryer has just teed up Udonis Haslam, who did not like that last call. And Haslam being kept away by his teammates. Chauncey Phillips will shoot the technical. Well, this is what happens when you play Detroit. Frustration sets in because you have to deal with that speed and quickness over and over again. And things don't go your way. You start to lose a little bit of your composure. Miami has to maintain an even keel here. They're only down 10. Plenty of time in this game. And this is a Miami team that has won 24 of its last 25 at home, including four in the postseason, 35 and six at home during the regular campaign. Second best home record in the league. Here is Rasheed Wallace. He's had the touch. That's a two-pointer. 20 for Rasheed, and Detroit leads by 12. Five and a half remaining in the third. Wade had to put the brakes on. Morning, who came on for O'Neal, got the step and is fouled as uh, he and Rasheed Wallace collide. Foul on Ben Wallace. I like what Rasheed does here. He sets the screen and then he doesn't have to roll to the three point line. He can step in and shoot a 20 footer rather than a 23 footer. He loves it. I think he fired that headband towards the sideline on the previous possession but he is feeling it tonight well it's a very difficult thing to ask Haslam to try to get out and show him that screen roll on Phillips and then try to get back to Rasheed Wallace and cover his outside shot the way he's shooting the ball right now that's what happens with these Detroit guards you have to trap them because they shoot the ball so well coming off screens it frees up that little floating jump shot that uh, Wallace gets when he pushes out on the perimeter so the Pistons maintain the 12-point lead. Miami now four of eight at the foul line. See Hamilton looking to lose dueling on a screen, and he does. Here's Hamilton. Oh, that's his game, a la Reggie Miller. Incredible. He just took two full laps around the court and then calmly nailed the jumper. You mentioned Miller. He did that for so long shooting threes. That's what always amazed me about Reggie. He'd run your ragged, then shoot a 24-footer. Hamilton, more of a mid-range guy. Well, you, to be in that kind of condition, to be able to play like that is amazing. Here's another shot block at the rim. Here's Haslam handling his way. Detroit has outscored Miami 20 to 9 in this third quarter. They lead by 12 with four and a half remaining in the third. And Dooling and Hamilton come together. The foul is on Dooling.
just take a look at Richard Hamilton. This is what Steve was talking about. You sprint, you sprint. Now you get yourself under control. The good footwork and pull up and shoot that little medium range jump shot. Rip Hamilton again, that to me the best mid-range shooter in the NBA coming off those curls. Antonio the dice has come on for Ben Wallace. Oh, and that's an offensive foul. Phillips picks up his second. Things are starting to get a little testy now. Miami down 12. They know they're going to have to start competing. Get back in this game. The little hook that time on Chauncey Phillips. Here is Dooling. Going to work himself free for the shot. Keon Dooling. Detroit's lead is now 10 with four minutes to go in the third and Larry Brown takes a timeout as well as Miami has or excuse me as Detroit has played it's only a 10 point game if Miami can get a couple stops or get this to four or six Larry Brown it's been a, a difficult season for Larry physically had hip surgery back in November complications forced him to have a second surgery in March and then return for the stretch run is uh, hanging in from a physical point of view as uh, he looks to successfully defend the uh, NBA championship. And here he is in the Eastern Conference Final Series. Doug, you and Larry were exchanging war stories about <laughs> your hip replacement. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Marvin and I just looked on quietly. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to go through that, no. I can tell you. Shot clock is down to three. Prince, yes. What a move by Tayshawn Prince. 11 points for Prince, who has been outstanding doing it at the offensive end and at the defensive end. He has frustrated Dwayne Wade. And this is the time of the game when Miami usually turns to Wade when Shaq is out of the game. See a foul on McDice. But anytime Shaq's on the bench, Miami's going to try to get the ball to Wade and have him create. The problem is he's really struggled through this game. And it uh, looks like uh, Haslam got hit in the hand where he has that dislocated finger. Here comes Shaquille O'Neal checking back in. He'll replace Udonis Haslam. So Stan Van Gundy with going with O'Neal and Morning. Let's check in with David Aldridge. Well, guys, you mentioned Larry Brown's situation physically. He seems much calmer in this series and really I've ever seen him in a long time in the postseason during that last time out. He just asked everybody how many fouls they had and pointed out that when we move the ball from side to side, we get great things. All right, here is O'Neal getting inside. And in our chat with Larry earlier, seemed to be very relaxed. I think the hip surgery discussion with Doug is what <laughs> calmed him down. <laughs> Hamilton. Kept alive by Ben Wallace, rejected by Morton, and we get a whistle. Foul on Wade. That is his first. Well, this is very interesting because O'Neal and Morning really have not played much together at all, and you'll see a great block by Morning, but Wade got him first. So we'll see now the effect, and I think Van Gundy's taking a little bit of a risk here because he doesn't know what to expect with these two guys on the floor together question is does Detroit pack in the lane and let morning shoot the ball or does Miami have the power advantage inside can they get to the rim and Wallace shooting only 53 percent at the line in the postseason Pistons lead by 11 three minutes left in the third Marv Albert Doug Collins Steve Kerr Craig Sager David Aldridge we're in Miami for the opener of this best of seven. Eddie Jones from way downtown. He has 18 points. People forget Eddie Jones was the leading scorer for Miami for the past four seasons. He was relegated to the third option this year. Took him a little bit of time to adjust, but he's coming up huge in the playoffs. Here's Hamilton, rejected by Morton. Kept alive by McDice, and he's fouled by Morton. Miami with their fourth team foul. All right, for more on O'Neal and Morning, let's check in with Craig Sager. 
This is the first time that Shaquille O'Neal and Alonzo Mourning have been on the same court together. In fact, they have not practiced it all together because of the injuries to Shaq. However, you're sitting on the sidelines. The thigh was starting to tighten up. He told Stan Van Gundy, it doesn't do any good sitting. I have to keep it loose. So they're trying the experiment right here. Harp. All right, thanks, Craig. Antonio McDice for the nice turnaround to extend to a 69-59 Detroit lead. You know, I think Stan Van Gundy is going with Zoe and Shaq up to together emotionally more than anything else. Trying to get this crowd excited because Zoe is such an emotional player. All right, here is O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, 8 of 11. He has 17 points. Although Stan Van Gundy has said on several occasions he wants Morning to be intelligently intense to avoid technical fouls. He likes the emotion, but he's got to calm it down. Shot clock down to five. Prince, Miami looking for a foul. A technical foul indicated. Did the basket count? Yes, it did. And uh, I believe he hung on the rim. One of the Heat players off the basketball grabbed the net as he tried to jump up to block the shot. So watch now what's happened. Zoe's coming over and he grabs the net right there as he tries to block the shot. What an incredible shot by Tayshawn Prince. Right over the fingertips of Zoe. You see him hanging on to the net. So it will be a technical free throw for Chauncey Billups. What a great call by Bernie Fire. It was tough to tell what happened and he picked it out immediately. Excellent call. Billups knocks down the free throw. You know, you know what we have not seen in this game yet? We have not seen one of those droughts by Detroit. You know, they have been very consistent offensively the entire night. Question's going to be, can Miami get enough defensive stops to get them back into the game? The basket by Prince counted. Three-point play with that technical free throw. Here's Dooling who just checked back in. So the Pistons now lead 72. 63 as we come up on a minute remaining in the third quarter. Phillips puts a move on Wade. And the pass deflected. Last touched by Dooling. It's amazing that here we are in the conference finals and Miami has a lineup on the floor that has never been together all season. That is stunning and it shows you, I think, as you said, Doug, the, the fear or lack of a better word that Van Gundy has right now. He's trying to get his crowd into the game by any means possible. Slapped out of bounds by Ben Wallace who comes up hobbling. And he's trying to work it off as he heads down court. Guys, again, you look at the score. It's a nine-point game, Detroit. If, if Miami gets a couple stops and a couple scores, you're looking at a six or seven-point game. That's a very workable margin. So you guys talked about before, Detroit could go through a stretch of three or four minutes without scoring. We have not seen that yet tonight. Carlos Arroyo back at the point. Coming on for Chauncey Phillips. Sits down with ten points. Four assists. O'Neal played by Wallace. With some help from Hunter, here's Wade to the crossover. Wade to the reverse. Oh. It's a seven-point Piston lead. Final minute, third quarter. Arroyo on a pick and roll. Here's Ben Wallace. Oh, he he is in rhythm. I don't know if he ever had an offensive rhythm, but we're seeing it now. How about that for confidence, though? You're on the ropes a little bit. You need a basket. You run a pick and roll with Arroyo and Ben Wallace for the jumper. Six of nine for Ben Wallace. Well, Keon Dooley giving his team a huge lift right now off the bench when they desperately needed it the most. Dooling is connected on four of seven. He has eight points. We are now to ten seconds remaining in the third. It's a seven-point piston lead as Arroyo works the clock down. Final second. Ben Wallace for three. And that will end the third quarter. Now, don't tell me that was a set play to get Ben Wallace a three at the end of the day. If it is, Larry Brown has more confidence in him than, than I, I can even imagine. Doug, he stepped back I know the that. line and shot it. <laughs> I know that. Well, ben hit one of nine from downtown <laughs> during the regular season. <laughs> He's saying he was due. <laughs> Seven-point piston lead as we head to the fourth. 